Time now for our rants and raves. And I'm going to start with you, Adam. I want to uh, rant about what is happening to Roman Protasevich. He's an opposition journalist from Belarusia. His plane, which was in transit over Europe, was forced down. Uh, the Belarusian government used a fake bomb threat. He has been detained, and based on videos that the Belarusian government has been releasing of him, uh, and hopefully we have some of those, he is being tortured as he's being detained. You can see his face has been beaten up. He's got uh, sort of chafe or cut marks on his wrist. And in these videos, he's saying wonderful things about Belarus's dictator, Alexander Lukashenko. It is a horrific story of Awful. a basic violation of norms, press freedoms. Uh, there is pushback from the international community. I'd like to see it be even sharper, because what happened to him is an absolute nightmare. And if it happened to him, it can happen to any other journalist. Yeah, you want, you, you want to hope that somebody can step in and... Yeah, know. Yeah. Do, and sanctions I mean, aren't going to do it. Yeah, no, that, and Russia is lending support yeah, to exactly. yellow Russia because that's the way they operate, mm -hmm. too. Right. All right, Mike. Well, this is not nearly as severe as what Adam uh, just described, uh, but I'd like to offer a rant for the former Trump Justice Department to, uh, for their secretly seizing of 2017 phone records of four New York Times reporters came out a couple of days ago. Uh, this follows, I think, similar revelations last month that we learned reporters for The Washington Post and CNN also had their phone logs seized. Uh, the Trump White House was apparently trying to find out who in government leaked information uh, regarding the James Comey investigation at Hillary Clinton's email server. Uh, the interesting thing was this is not the first time this has happened by a long shot. There's the story. Both Presidents Bush and Obama seized phone records of reporters for AP and Fox the rules, however, for doing this were tightened up during the Obama administration after there was such an outcry. Uh, I just think it's wrong on any level, and what the Trump White House did was wrong, and for this, they get a rant. Do we, do we have any idea what they did with it, Mike, the data? Uh, what they did with the phone records? Yeah. So, uh, I don't know. I think that that has not been reported. I know that they also tried to seize email logs, not emails themselves. They were prevented from doing that. Um, I think they were just trying to figure out who these reporters were in contact yeah. with so they could figure out where the leak came from. Okay, Lila. I have a rave um, for XTR. It's a small indie um, documentary studio, and they announced this week that they're going to be creating a documentary called In Her Own Words, which is um, going to feature Julie Rajinsky and Gretchen oh, yeah. Carlson both of Fox News, um, who were limited by their NDAs from actually telling us about what happened in their sexual discrimination, sexual harassment lawsuits against Roger Isles. Um, yes. They created, co-founded an organization called Lift Our Voices, which is dedicated to fighting NDAs and allowing women to speak and to fight back. Um, so I'm really excited that they're finally going to be able to actually tell their own stories. Yeah, that's, I can't wait to hear that one. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we've got uh, Alberto. All right, my rant has to do with sports, okay? Actually, more specific, sports radio in this town, all right? Now, I'm a native Bostonian, and I know this town loves the sports, but my rant is that we just don't have enough Latino voices behind the mic or in front of the camera. Now, it's ironic because over the past two decades, some of our biggest sports icons have had last names like Martinez, Ortiz, Ramirez, and as I referred to earlier, we have a Puerto Rican running the Red Sox right now on the field. <laughs> You know, Alex Cora. So, look, I know we've made some progress uh, in the last few years in having more African-American voices and obviously more women, too, here in, in Boston. But one out of every five Bostonian now identifies themselves as Latino. And as of 1980, which was Larry Bird's rookie year, sports fan perspective, Latinos make up 92 percent of Boston's population growth, 92 percent. So with those kind of crazy numbers, Emily, do you think it's too much you to think. ask include more Latinos in a sports conversation? Yeah, I agree with you. We'll, we'll get working on that. All right. Uh, finally, tonight, well, I have a rant for Facebook. So today they decided that they're going to suspend Donald Trump's Facebook account for another two years. Like, that's fine. But this seems completely random, very much like they're making up as they go as they go along, as they did originally when they suspended him. And they said that they will take a look in two years and decide whether the risk to the public has receded in terms of you know, whether he is still going to be a damaging influence on 
on uh, Facebook. W- w- what does that mean? I mean, if, if he's not, if he doesn't have a voice, if he's not on Facebook now, how do they know that he's going to change? Anyway, I mean, it's good that they suspended him for two years, but it's crazy that they weren't more definitive.